That's crazy. All right. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, again, let's go and work on verifying this identity. So what I have is 1 divided by 1 minus sine of theta plus 1 divided by 1 plus sine of theta equals 2, can't, 2 secant squared of theta. Now, what we have previously thought about when verifying identities is the major thing is to make sure that your identities, um, or to verify them, that we work with one side only, right? And we just want to work on one side only just to simplify that one side. So when looking at this, um, what I need to do is I need to simplify my side. And I see which side is obviously needs to apply, you know, be more, is more complex than the other side. Well, obviously, ladies and gentlemen, almost all the time when you lose your microphone, uh, when you're going to have fractions or multiple terms, that's the side that you're, that you're going to want to combine. All right? Obviously, we're not going to want to diffract this to go and break it out into two different fractions. If you guys can combine your terms here, all right, we can go and see, can we make it look like 2 secant squared? Right, Lauren? So what I have here is I have two fractions. And when adding fractions, we need to remember that we need to make sure that we're adding common terms. Or I'm sorry, we have common denominators. So what I'm going to look over here is to add these up, I need to make sure I have a common denominator. Um, and since this is 1 minus sine of theta and then 1 plus sine of theta, to get common denominators, I'm going to multiply by the other denominator. Make sure you multiply on the top and the bottom to make sure you have equivalent fractions. Yes, they should be plus. Then over here, I'll multiply by 1 minus sine of alpha, and this one by 1 minus sine of alpha. OK. So then when I multiply over, now I'm going to have 1 plus sine of alpha plus 1 minus sine of alpha divided by my common denominator, which I'm not going to factor out yet. I'm just going to leave as 1 plus sine of alpha times 1 minus sine of alpha. And that's supposed to be verified as 2 secant squared of alpha. So do you guys see by just adding my two fractions, all right, what I have simply done is I've now kind of gotten it away from me having two different terms. So now it's leasing into one term. It's still a fraction, whereas this side is not a fraction, but I've at least now combined it into one term. All right? Lauren, could you take your bag off your desk, please? So now what we need to look at is, let's go and see here. We have sine of alpha minus sine of alpha. That's going to add up to 1. So you add the tops, you're just going to be left with 2. Um, I'm not really seeing anything that I can uh, ca um, cancel either to 1 or to 0 on the denominator. So I'm going to multiply that out. Since that's a difference of squares, that's going to leave me with 1 minus sine squared of alpha, which we know is cosine. Cosine squared of alpha, which equals 2 secant squared of alpha. Again, the reason why we get uh, from 1 minus sine squared, we know that's going to equal cosine cosine squared of alpha because our Pythagorean identities. So then you look at this, and obviously, one when you have cosine in your denominator, that's the same thing as 2 secant squared of alpha equals 2 secant squared of alpha. Right, because remember, 1 over cosine of alpha is equal to secant of alpha. Right? So since cosine's in your denominator, you're going to want to put it on your numerator. OK? okay? Yes? What is the cancel So I have a positive sine of theta minus sine of theta gives me 0. And then add it up to 2, 1. And then you just add 1 plus 1. So they don't can't, I mean, they cancel, do they add up to 0? I multiplied my two binomials. I multiplied. I multiplied 1 plus sine of theta. I multiplied 1 plus sine of theta times 1 minus sine of theta. OK? And what that gave me was the difference of two squares gave me this problem. I know. I, d 